Good afternoon, this is meteorologist Drew Montrell for Finger Lakes Weather with a 1 p.m. Wednesday update on our upcoming snowstorm, the first big snow of the season for much of the Finger Lakes. So let's get right into things. I'm going to show you a few things where the storm's at right now and quick go over the forecast for you once again. So the first thing we're looking at is the regional uh, radar across the eastern United States. You can see we've already got quite a bit of precipitation out there all heading north, just starting to come across the New York-Pennsylvania state line. Um, this is actually from a couple of different low pressure systems, which I'll show you in a second, and they're going to merge into one big coastal storm. I'm going to zoom in on our region a little bit so we can get a little bit better of an idea as we can see the snow lifting north through Pennsylvania coming into the southern tier. Um, some of this may not be reaching the ground right at first. The atmosphere is rather dry thanks to that high pressure to the north that I've uh, been talking about for quite a while. Um, but the snow is going to be overspreading our region over the next few hours. Uh, should reach the I-90 corridor somewhere between 4 and 6 p.m. areas further south before that obviously. Once the snow does start, it's not going to take long for it to get um, to a moderate to heavy rate. And since temperatures are very cold, with just in the 20s right now, it's going to start accumulating on surfaces and roadways right away. Um, so travel conditions over the course of the afternoon, especially as we get towards the evening, are going to go downhill pretty fast. So let's switch over to kind of um, the surface map and we can see that we've got that big dominating high pressure just to the north of New York State that is acting to not only supply plenty of cold air with the system winds around the high come clockwise so we've got cold air coming down on the front side of the high um, feeding into the storm and making it so that there's no chance for any sleet or freezing rain or anything here it's going to be all snow for us um, but the other thing that high is going to do, if I can get that to erase, as this low comes north up the coast, it's going to block it and it's going to make it slow down and turn to the east. So that slowing down and turning is going to keep the snow over this area a bit longer than it would if the storm was just racing up to the north. And that's another reason why snow totals um, are going to be pretty impressive in some areas, uh, especially just to the south and southeast of the Finger Lakes, um, but maybe even getting into the southern tier a little bit. I want to also take another moment and show you the ensembles that I've been charting now for a week leading up to the storm. Um, I showed you this image on Sunday with all the data I had and then again yesterday morning I included it in my blog post. Um, if you missed the explanation real quick, these uh, is a chart of the European ensembles. An ensemble is when they take a model and they adjust it ever so slightly and run it and adjust it a different way and run it again. They do this over and over again and that gives a broad range um, of possibilities that meteorologists can look at to see what possible weather scenarios might unfold. Now it's only a model so there's always a chance that all of the ensemble members can be wrong. Um, but about a week ago when I first started seeing this storm showing up on the models consistently, um, I wanted to track how its intensity was going to change over time on the models. Um, so I started charting how much snow it was predicting for Ithaca um, with each run of the model. And this goes back to last Thursday um, on the left side here, all the way up to the models that ran overnight last night. Uh, the morning models are not in yet. Um, but I've broken down the snow amounts into the gray is under two inches, the lighter blue is two to five inches, darker blue six to twelve, pink twelve to eighteen, and the purple more of a eighteen plus extreme snow event. And then I plotted how many, what percentage of the ensemble members showed that. And what I was hoping was going to happen is that with, you know, probably a day, one to three days before the storm, so we're talking Monday, Tuesday, that the ensemble members would kind of all bunch into one of these bins and um, increase the confidence. Of course, that hasn't really happened this time. Um, finally, the last two runs of the model have shown for Ithaca um, a 6 to 12 inch storm pretty overwhelmingly on the ensemble members, but you can see there's been lots of bouncing around and lots of changing um, 
with the expectations with this storm. That's kind of indicative of that real tight gradient in the snowfall I've been talking about that's going to set up right over the Finger Lakes. So that even a small movement north or south can really change things. Now you might be wondering if this, these ensembles are saying 6 to 12 inches are the most likely scenario for Ithaca, why does my snow map have Ithaca right at 12 inches? Well, these ensemble members are calculating snow at what's called a 10 to 1 ratio. So for every inch of liquid that falls from this storm, it corresponds to 10 inches of snow. So if you, t if you get an inch of, or 10 inches of snow and melt that down, the liquid that you'd have left would be like 1 inch of rain. That is kind of a standard baseline that meteorologists use to get a first look, um, but we can fine-tune that better. And since we have lots of cold air in place, and there's lots of good dynamics in the atmosphere that will enhance snowflake growth and snowflake size, we're probably going to be looking at more like a 12 to 1 or a 15 to 1 ratio. So instead of 10 inches coming down to 1 inch of liquid, it's going to be 12 inches or 15 inches coming down to 1 inch of liquid. So that's going to lead to higher snowfall amounts. Um, so even though the ensembles have been in that 6 to 12 inch range for Ithaca, um, I did bump that up a little bit. Um, I can show you my snow map so we can see across the whole region. Uh, and we can really see that tight gradient that sets up across the southern half of the region. Um, and a lot of times with these types of storms, and especially since we've got that dominating high pressure right to the north, um, the north and western edge really gets squished in and you get a real tight gradient in the snowfall. And unfortunately for forecasters around here, this time that's going to set up over our region, which makes it very difficult to pinpoint exactly who's going to get what. Um, and you'll see a lot of forecasts that are wavering back and forth, especially if you use a weather app and then you see the snowfall prediction change like 20 times a day. Um, that's probably because it's using some sort of model data or combination of model and it's just jumping around with those little wobbles in the model. Um, what I try to do is I try to filter out all that noise and just make one or in this case two snow maps um, to really just try to get down to the essence of what's going to happen. Um, so for our region this is the snow map I made this morning. This is the last snow map I'm going to make. I'm not changing this at all. Um, this is about what I expect. It is a medium to medium low confidence sort of situation so just because it says Ithaca 12 inches doesn't mean Ithaca is necessarily going to get exactly 12 inches. You know, It might be more like 10 inches or it could be 14 inches. Um, you know, There's going to be these variations. It's a natural thing that is just going to happen. So when you're looking at this snowfall map, um, look at the range that your area is in more than the number that's put on the map for the city nearby. Um, if you're right on kind of the border between two ranges, so say you're right between the dark blue and the pink, um, you know, you can expect to be on the high end of the blue or the low end of the pink. So that would be, you know, 10 to 14 inches, uh, for example, uh, for the Ithaca area or Bath. Um, as we go further north, these snowfall amounts are going to drop off pretty rapidly. Um, so the northern half of the Finger Lakes yeah, it's going to be, you know, kind of a nuisance event and it's going to cause some travel trouble and you're going to want to slow down and take it seriously. Um, but it's not the same sort of a blockbuster event as, you know, we've seen many times over previous winters. Um, that's going to be kind of contained to the southern tier, especially um, Elmira, probably looking at about a foot and a half. Um, as you get down to Pennsylvania, that's where the real heavy stuff's going to be with snowfall rates overnight of two to three inches an hour. Um, could easily pile up over two feet down in those areas. Um, so if we come back to the radar, um, again, just to kind of recap, the snow is starting to cross the border into New York State. Um, we should see the snow overspread the rest of our region over the next few hours. It will become heavy pretty quickly. It's going to start accumulating right away. Um, and this is going to continue through the night. On the back side, tomorrow morning, the snow should be pulling up between 6 and 9 a.m. from west to east. Uh, even once the snow ends, it's going to take a little longer for the roads to get cleaned up. So the morning commute tomorrow is going to be tricky, um, especially if you have to travel before the sun is up. 
definitely want to plan on at least double your time probably. If your commute's a bit later, you can uh, probably get away with, you know, maybe time and a half instead of double. Um, but do take it seriously. Slow down. Um, if you don't have to go out, it's a good idea to stay in tonight and into early tomorrow. Uh, please be sure to send me your snowfall reports tomorrow morning. I hope to be able to tabulate everything into a nice map, and uh, we'll see what happens from here. All right. As always, please feel free to ask any questions you have. Uh, I'm not doing questions on the live video. It's just too hard to um, monitor all the questions, but I will go back through and answer any questions that have come through um, and uh, comment, send me a message on Facebook, comment on flxweather.com, uh, pretty much any way you can think of to ask your question, I'll be sure to answer it. All right, thank you very much. Stay safe and enjoy the snow.